Chinese real estate today is like a scene from Infernal Affairs. A duplex in the second phase of Quihu Lake was sold for 65 million yuan, but the actual price was much lower. In other words, if customers want to sell now, they still have to sell at very low prices. Shanghai, the most prosperous city in China, has always attracted attention from outside observers. The local luxury housing market has long been a popular investment choice for many high net worth individuals. But now, with China's sluggish economy and the real estate sector in crisis, a severe depression in Shanghai's market is unfolding. Recently, the luxury secondhand housing market has also faced unprecedented challenges. Some top luxury homes, even with discounts, are struggling to attract any interest. We can't hold out any longer. Some luxury homes in Shanghai have fallen to cabbage prices. Pudong Lujiazui, the most coveted location in Shanghai and perhaps in all of China, is known for its abundance of billionaires and local tycoons. To borrow a popular internet phrase, the air here is filled with the smell of money. Due to this wealth, Lujiazui has the largest number of luxury homes in the country and some of the most famous ones. The World Trade Center Riverside Garden is one of the earliest luxury housing developments in Lujiazui. Living here used to be a symbol of status and power. However, recently, a second-hand home in the World Trade Center Riverside Garden was listed, and the price dropped sharply, sending shockwaves through the entire luxury housing market in Shanghai. A few days ago, news also surfaced online that the luxury home of Wang Sikong, the wealthy heir of Wanda Group, was up for sale in Shanghai. It is said that the interior decoration of this luxury home is lavish, and one could move in immediately with just their luggage. There's even a large garden of 100 square meters, but the asking price is 12 million yuan lower than the market value. Wang Sikong is urgently selling his luxury home in Shanghai, 12 million yuan below market price. So why is he selling? Aren't many experts and influencers claiming that the core assets and first-tier cities will appreciate? Maybe you'll argue that he wants to settle in Japan. Even if that's true, he could still hold on to this asset. So why sell it now? I personally have two theories. First, Wang Sikong might believe that if he doesn't sell it now, it will be even harder to sell later, even at a lower price. Second, perhaps many wealthy individuals are also selling their luxury homes and real estate quickly, but Wang Sikong's sale happened to get noticed. Another netizen revealed that a large number of Shanghai landlords are now rushing to sell and flee the market. Many Shanghai landlords are rushing to offload their properties. Recently, Shanghai landlords trying to sell their homes must have noticed a problem. It's becoming harder and harder to sell. On the one hand, there are very few people even coming to view the properties. On the other hand, if the price isn't set at the lowest in the community, no one will bother coming to look at the house. Even if the price is the lowest in the community, someone might come to see it. But when the buyer makes an offer, the landlord will be enraged. For a house listed at 10 million, some buyers will ask if it can be sold for 7 million. Some buyers will even bargain down to half and ask if it can be sold for 5 million. On the other hand, after the CCP recently released a package of new policies to rescue the market, there have been numerous public opinions and reports online all frantically promoting the idea that several newly opened real estate projects in Shanghai have sold out and even triggered a buying spree, creating the impression that the Shanghai luxury housing market is booming. But the truth is quite different. Those who trust these unscrupulous media outlets will end up losing everything. Although several newly launched luxury housing projects in Shanghai have sold well, the overall second-hand luxury housing market in Shanghai has been in terrible shape recently. It's as if landlords are cutting their own flesh. It's truly heartbreaking. Recently, Ji Chinkemo, a financial influencer with millions of followers, stated that Shanghai's promotion of luxury housing is actually an open conspiracy. The data people are seeing shows that Shanghai's housing prices have risen year on year. But does this mean Shanghai's housing prices have bottomed out and are now on the rise? If Shanghai's housing prices go up, will Beijing follow? If people continue to think in this habitual way, 
it proves that the conspiracy has succeeded. Beyond Shanghai, housing prices in other cities in China are also continuing to fall. According to data released by the National Bureau of Statistics of the Communist Party of China, in August of this year, the sales prices of commercial residential houses in 70 cities across the country fell, with the price trend of new houses still mainly declining. Today, let's delve into the stories behind these numbers. In August, the national real estate market seemed to still be hovering in a downward trajectory, with multiple indicators hitting record lows. The decline in new home prices, both month-on-month -month and year-on-year, -year, has widened. The second-hand housing market has fallen year-on-year -year for 31 consecutive months, affecting both first- and second-tier cities, with many cities seeing drops of over 2%. The market is cooling, and the wait-and-see attitude of home buyers is growing stronger. According to the data, the new commercial housing price index in 70 cities fell by 0.7% month-on-month and 5.7% year-on-year in August, marking a decline that has persisted for 15 months. Although the month-on-month -month decline in first-tier cities has narrowed, it remains a year-on-year -year drop. Meanwhile. The month-on-month -month and year-on-year -year declines in second- and third-tier cities have expanded to 0.7% and 0.8% and 5.3% and 6.2%, respectively. Overall, housing prices in almost all cities across the country are continuing to fall, and the market seems to have little chance to recover. Among the 70 cities, only Shanghai and Nanjing saw month-on-month -month increases, while housing prices in Xi'an remained stable. Most other cities showed a downward trend. As for second-hand housing, the number of cities with month-on-month -month declines has further increased. Among the 70 cities, only Jilin experienced a month-on-month -month increase in housing prices. The top two cities with the largest declines were Huizhou and Xiamen. A Reuters survey predicts that China's housing prices will fall by 8.5% in 2024 and continue to decline by 3.9% in 2025. Industry experts suggest that it will take time for the market to fully recover, with the recovery of buyers' demand, income, and confidence being key factors. There has never been a country in history facing such a complex situation, a declining total population, accelerated aging, a macro leverage ratio nearing 300%, and the onset of a downward trend in the real estate cycle. Don't buy a house. Housing prices will continue to fall. In two years, prices will drop to 2,000 to 3,000 yuan per square meter. Interest rates will fall on their own, and interest might even be waived. In the future, no one will want these houses, even if they are given away for free. We are also in the era of supply cuts, and many people are already collapsing under the pressure. Additionally, no house is selling. If you look at the data on house sales, it's all fake. The people viewing the homes are hired agents, paid 200 yuan a day, or even just 80 yuan a day. Anyone advising you to buy a house now is not to be trusted. Given the lack of market confidence, local authorities within the CCP have recently introduced various strange policies to lure people into buying houses. On October 16, 2024, the official WeChat account of Liangxi District, Wuxi City, Liangxi Release, introduced version 4.0 of the Old for New commercial housing policy, claiming that the acquisition of existing secondhand commercial housing in Yangtze River Delta cities such as Shanghai and Nanjing will be expanded. In other words, residents who hold secondhand housing in Shanghai can register through the relevant online pre-registration channel and sell their secondhand homes in Shanghai to entities designated by Liangxi Chengfa Group in exchange for designated new housing. This is really eye-opening. Wuxi is now targeting secondhand homes in Shanghai, but who would be willing to sell their secondhand homes in Shanghai and buy new homes in Wuxi? Are these workers from Wuxi who work in Shanghai? Homeowners in Shanghai who can no longer afford their mortgages? Or owners of dilapidated houses in Shanghai looking to start a new life in Wuxi? In any case, this is a very bold move. Would you consider moving to Wuxi? Earlier in August, 
Wuxi was the first in the country to propose the idea of trading in homes across cities. At the time, it was aimed at people who owned properties in Wuxi, Suzhou, Changzhou, and other cities, designating seven new commercial housing projects under Liangxi Chengfa Group in Liangxi District. In the newly announced version, the number of designated real estate projects has increased from seven to nine, all located in Liangxi District, Wuxi City. However, the announcement did not specify the requirements for secondhand homes in Shanghai that are eligible for the program, nor did it provide details on pricing or the transfer process. China's economic crisis is escalating like never before, and anxiety prevails in Zhongnanhai. China's economy is in a serious recession, with a wave of bankruptcies, unemployment, and business closures sweeping across most economic sectors. Faced with this significant threat, Xi Jinping and senior leaders of the Chinese Communist Party held an extraordinary meeting on September 26, announcing a series of so-called economic rescue plans. Following the heavy economic stimulus measures announced by the People's Bank of China, the Financial Regulatory Bureau, and the China Securities Regulatory Commission on September 24, the Chinese Communist Party held another Politburo meeting on September 26, pledging to deploy necessary fiscal expenditures, even going so far as to spend money directly. Today, many regions have followed up with relevant specific measures. Shanghai and Shenzhen to fully lift purchase restrictions. On September 27, Reuters, citing four sources familiar with the matter, exclusively reported that Shanghai and Shenzhen will announce the lifting of the remaining restrictions on home purchases in the coming weeks. This includes easing restrictions on non-local residents buying homes and lifting limits on the number of homes local residents can purchase. In addition to core areas like Xicheng and Dongcheng, Beijing is also reportedly considering similar measures. These two districts are Beijing's political center. Over the past year, most Chinese cities have completely lifted real estate purchase restrictions. Some believe these measures contradict Xi Jinping's previous vow to focus on houses for living, not speculation. Mr. Xi is currently very worried upon realizing that the Chinese economy is like a train going downhill without brakes. The economic recession could lead to potential internal political instability that Mr. Xi does not want. According to a report by Radio Free Asia, the total debt of Chinese local governments stands at approximately 91.2 trillion yuan. The whole network is shocked. China's unfinished houses outnumber unsold ones by 20 times. Liu Ting, chief economist of Nomura Securities China, said while analyzing the current situation of China's real estate market, that the guarantee delivery of houses policy, ensuring that Chinese real estate developers deliver houses, should take precedence over the government's current policy of buying existing houses to reduce inventory because the number of houses that developers have sold but not completed is 20 times that of houses that are completed but not sold. This published data shocked the media. On September 28th, the highly anticipated Tsinghua PBC Chief Economist Forum was held in Beijing. The forum brought together many well-known economists and financial industry leaders from home and abroad to discuss the challenges facing the Chinese economy. Liu Ting, chief economist of Nomura Securities China, thoroughly analyzed the current situation of China's real estate market. He said that the most significant pressure on China's economic downturn in recent years came from the real estate sector. Solving the problem of clearing the real estate market is the key to current economic stability and development. Among these, guaranteeing the delivery of houses should be prioritized, even surpassing the importance of stockpiling. Liu Ting cited Country Garden's data as an example, stating that Country Garden has built but not sold about 36,000 houses, while the number of houses that have been sold but not yet completed has reached 730,000, and the number of houses under construction but not yet sold is 350,000. The ratio between the three is about 1 to 20 to 10. Faced with such data, should our policy address this one, that is, the houses that have been built but not sold, or should it target the 20, that is, the houses that have been sold but not yet completed? 
Liu Tang raised this sharp question. His answer is that the policy should focus on solving those houses that have been sold, but not yet completed, meaning giving priority to solving the guaranteed delivery of houses. The Politburo meeting of the CPC Central Committee on September 26th proposed for the first time that it is necessary to promote the real estate market to stop falling and stabilize. Liu Ting said in his speech, only by clearing the market and rebuilding confidence can the real estate market stop falling and stabilize. Liu Ting said that the main problem facing the current real estate market is the market failure and government failure under the pre-sale system. To rebuild market confidence and order, the confidence issue must be solved, ensuring home buyers are certain they will receive their houses. Only by letting home buyers see the actual houses can their confidence in the real estate market be gradually restored. To achieve this goal, Liu Ting estimated that the government would need to invest about 3 trillion yuan to solve the problem of guaranteed delivery of houses. But Liu Ting believes that this huge expenditure is necessary to solve the current predicament of the real estate market. The money would mainly be used to ensure that the houses sold, but not yet completed, can be successfully completed and delivered to the home buyers. Guaranteed delivery of housing refers to the previously proposed guaranteed delivery of buildings policy, which means ensuring that the houses can be completed and delivered to avoid unfinished buildings. The specific measure is the real estate whitelist mechanism promoted earlier this year, allowing commercial banks to lend to projects on the whitelist. On April 30th this year, the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee first proposed the term guaranteed delivery of housing. According to a recent report by Bloomberg Intelligence, based on pre-sale data from 2015 to the first half of this year, at least 48 million pre-sold houses in China have not been completed, indicating that China's real estate crisis will not be resolved anytime soon. Doomsday Carnival? China's stock market is terrifying. According to a report by the Financial Times on September 29th, statistics from Wind Data show that in just four days, the market value of A shares soared from 74.98 trillion to 84.86 trillion yuan, with a net increase of about 10 trillion yuan over this period, averaging 47,000 yuan per stockholder. On the eve of National Day, China's stock market experienced a strange surge, described by investors as moving from ICU, intensive care unit, to KTV. Chinese securities firms also use the term account opening like a tide to describe the surge in the number of new accounts in recent days. Wang He, an expert on China issues, told reporters, because China's stock market has been falling for a long time, many people have lost money and think they can take this opportunity to make up for their losses. This created a sudden craze, which is very abnormal. People who take risks are tempted by the desire for money and lose their reason. He added, aren't there many new accounts now? The leaks are coming in waves. But for those who have been trapped for a long time, this is the biggest opportunity. After this surge, there is a high probability of another stock market crash. So the current surge makes those who understand the Chinese stock market feel scared. Wang He stated that the CCP's market support plan appears strong on the outside, but is weak on the inside and is facing a huge financial crisis. The central bank's policy was issued under political pressure, lacking internal sustainability or economic logic. Those financial tycoons on Wall Street think it is best not to engage with the CCP's stock market. No matter how low prices fall, they will not enter, as the uncontrollable risks are too great and the overall outlook is very bleak and dark. Therefore, it is normal for China to cash out and significantly reduce its holdings. China's cement industry has suffered a historic loss, and its output has hit a 13-year low. According to data from the China Building Materials Federation, the total profit of the cement industry in the first half of 2024 was minus 1.15 billion yuan, and the loss rate of enterprises exceeded 50%. A research report from the China Cement Big Data Research Institute pointed out that the national cement output in the first half of the year was 850 million tons, a year-on-year -year decrease of 10.76% in all calibers, marking a new low since 2011. 
In terms of efficiency, the industry suffered a historic loss due to the sharp drop in cement prices and a decline in demand. The report shows that there are 20 cement-listed companies that have disclosed their first-half performance, including six on the Hong Kong stock market and 14 on the Shanghai and Shenzhen stock markets. The overall performance of these 20 listed cement companies is bleak. In terms of revenue, except for Huaxin Cement and Ningxia Building Materials, which achieved growth, the other 18 companies all experienced declines. Among them, seven companies saw a decline of more than 30%, mainly Conch Cement, Asia Cement, and Wanyanking. While revenues are declining across the board, nearly half of the listed cement companies are losing money. The report shows that in terms of net profit attributable to the parent company, 11 companies are profitable, while nine companies are losing money, and the profits of the profitable companies have all declined. The profits of Western Cement, Tapai Group, and Qingsong Construction Chemicals range between 200 million and 400 million yuan, with Qingsong Construction Chemicals profits falling by less than 20%, indicating a relatively small decline. Li Kunming of the Cement Big Data Research Institute analyzed that in the first half of 2024, due to the continued bottoming out of real estate investment and the slowdown in infrastructure investment, cement demand continued to decline. The market competition remains fierce, and cement prices are running at a low level. The industry as a whole presents the operating characteristics of shrinking demand, fierce competition, low prices, and operating losses. Prices fell continuously in the first quarter, and after entering the second quarter, the peak season was not prosperous, and demand continued to weaken.